Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. Great to be together for another week to open up God's Word and see what he has to say for another day. We're going to be turning through to Romans 8 once more and reading through the last section from verse 31 through 39. But before I open that up, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the way that week in and week out you bless it to us. And we ask that as we head into today's passage that you would bless it to us, that your spirit would use it so that it would cause fruit to grow in our lives, that we might know Christ, cherish him and love him with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Romans 8, verse 31 to 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He, who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, I've entitled the devotion, Who's the Who? Who's the Who? I wonder if that perplexed you, maybe. But I wonder if it strikes you. I mean, we love this passage. We're very familiar with it. We've probably all heard it used, spoken, preached on in our life somewhere, if we've grown up in the church especially. But one of the things that is really striking about this passage is the fact that Paul says, Who? Especially since in verse 31, he starts with what? And then when he gets down to verse 35, he doesn't speak about a person. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. These are not things that answer the question, who? What is going on here? Well, in verse 31, Paul brings us back into the, the same thing that we've been considering for, for a couple of weeks now, really, the suffering of God's people. In light of the discussion that we all must suffer in order to enter the glory that awaits us, that the suffering is the road that we walk on in order to enter into glory, what shall we say to all these things? What shall we say to all of this? And Paul enters into this incredible section of questions. Let's just take them one by one and see what Paul is trying to tell us. So firstly, if God is for us, who can be against us? What's the answer to that question? If God's for us, who can be against us? Well, I know you want to immediately say no one, but the answer is everyone. Isn't that true? If God is for us, that doesn't stop people being against us, does it? No, it doesn't. Because God was for Jesus. And yet, there were many people that were against Jesus. God was for Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley. And yet, in 1555, they were both burnt at the stake under the reign of Queen Bloody Mary. God is for the Christians in China that are suffering for their faith. God is for the Christians in Afghanistan who are suffering under the Taliban. 
God is for the Christians who are in Pakistan who have given up their life. God is for the Christians in Nigeria who have been martyred for their faith. And on and on and on the list goes. God is for the church of Jesus Christ. And yet, there are many people who oppose it. So it's not quite as simple as, well, if God's for us, no one's against us, as the prosperity gospel preachers might say. What does Paul mean then? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then he doesn't say everyone, and he doesn't say no one. He says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? So the answer is not none. The answer is not everyone. But the answer is really It doesn't matter. In fact, Paul doesn't actually answer the question. He just leads into the next question. Who can be against us if God is on our side? Well, everyone can be against us, but it makes no difference because God's on our side. You can endure all suffering because God is on your side. Because if God is on your side and God gave up his very son for you, Of course he's going to give you everything you need. Even your suffering will work towards your glory. Well, if if God gave up Jesus for us, who, verse 33, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? And verse 34, who is to condemn? And verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And now we have to ask the question, who is the who? Who can be against us? Who can bring any charge? Who can condemn? Who can separate us? Well, the answer is twofold. Firstly, who might try? That would be one way of asking the question. Who might try to do these things? And I think, I think it's fair to say that in the back of Paul's mind would be the devil. Who condemns God's people? Who seeks to bring slander against God's people? It's the devil, isn't it? Think back to Zechariah and the high priest. And you remember the high priest is there robed in his filthy garments and the devil stands there condemning him and accusing him before God. And what does God say? He says, get away. For this one is a brand snatched from the fire. You see, the point, Paul's point, is not whether someone is able to do these things because someone does try to do these things, the devil. But his point is that though the devil may try, he will never succeed. Let's see his point. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. How can he... How can the devil bring any charge against God's people if God has justified them? When the devil stands up and says, you are guilty of sin before God, God answers, not us. It's not our place. We don't need, we don't need to answer the devil because God himself answers and says, I've justified him. He's innocent. He is innocent of all sin. Because I have justified the elect. Well, who is there to condemn? No one can say, guilty, go to hell. Because Christ is the one who died. More than that, Christ is the one who was raised. More than that, Christ is the one who's at the right hand of God. Indeed, Christ is the one who is interceding at the right hand of God. So when the devil says, guilty, God says, no, look, just there at my right hand is Jesus, the son of God. He died. He was raised and he prays for them. He intercedes on their behalf. You've got nothing you can say, O devil. Well, who shall separate us from the love of God, the love of Christ? Verse 39, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
You see, the reality is the devil tries to do all of these things. The devil tries to separate us. The devil tries to condemn us. The devil tries to bring condemnation. The devil tries to oppose us. And so does the whole world. We must never forget there are two kingdoms in this world, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness will never stop seeking to destroy the Christian faith and to tear down your salvation. It will never seek anything for your good. It will only seek to destroy your faith. But it can never succeed if you're in Christ. You see, that's Paul's point. Paul's point is that you're safe and secure in Christ. Though suffering comes. You see, he's assuming that you will be suffering. And yet he says, in suffering, in the attack of the enemy, it will never, ever, ever succeed in the end. Because God is is for us and not against us. Because God has given his own son. Because God justifies. Because God has raised his son from the dead. Because Christ stands at the right hand of the Father. You see, our union with Christ assures us that when suffering comes, we can suffer knowing that our salvation and our soul itself is secure in heaven. You need not be afraid. My dear brother and sister, do not fear. Do not fear. The enemy has nothing he can do. Who brings these things? The devil. But they count for nothing. They count for nothing. We need to see the work of the devil for what it is. It is a great opposition. It is a powerful opposition, but it is a hollow, empty opposition. Because he can never succeed. Because Christ has won the victory. Don't doubt. Don't doubt your salvation. Don't doubt your security. You can have bold assurance of your salvation, knowing that nothing can ever overcome. Even the devil himself and all of his hatred can never do anything. Because Christ has won the day. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this incredible word and we pray that you'd help us to trust you in the midst of our suffering and torments no matter what this world and the devil might bring in jesus name we pray amen thanks so much for joining me for another devotion i'll see you here tomorrow afternoon